Ever since their simple beginnings, video games have always been a product with a cost attached to it. Could be a high one or a pretty low one, depending on what you are buying. If you didn't buy anything, well, you'd be missing out on what all the other kids are playing. And it's not like you could play that Pokemon game on the computer your dad uses for work. That's for boring stuff like emails and Excel sheets, right? Well, for me and many others, not quite. In a country that was going through one of its worst economic stages, it's not like you could just go get a Wii and buy virtual console titles to play old games in the legal and official way, like people from other countries and economic backgrounds could. You most likely had to resort to other methods of getting those games, methods that I won't endorse for legal reasons as piracy is a crime and crimes are bad. With that said, what I will talk about is something that, after years and years of court battles, is currently considered something that is completely legal, and that is emulation. And I'll be telling the story of how I got into it, as it was my formal introduction to the gaming world and even to the internet. So with all the other stuff out of the way, let's get into it. Our story, or I guess I should say my story, begins around 2011, in what I believe is a Tsunami Master ADW that belonged to my dad. In this era, 5 year old me wasn't doing a whole lot. I was either playing games on Miniclip or Sapu Kids, or just going outside to play and enjoy nature, something that I don't do anymore as I have more important stuff to do. But when using the computer and searching for every single thing in my mind ever since I found this cool guy named Google, I must have found a website that introduced me to the world of emulation, which, for legal reasons, I'll just call GameFab. And man, GameFab had some cool games. Mario, Sonic, and I can play this on my computer? I thought you could only do that in those red things I saw on TV every once in a while. And with no idea if I was about to get a great gaming experience or 200 viruses on my dad's computer, I gladly pressed the download button. And if you're wondering, I got both. Upon opening the executable, a window popped up and booted Sonic the Hedgehog. It said something like Fusion at the top, whatever that means, I just wanted to play Sonic. And I did play Sonic, until I got bored 5 seconds later and went on to try another game, some other Sonic title I'm guessing. And I downloaded and opened the executable and the exact same Fusion program opened, only this time it had the other game playing. Weird. What is this Fusion thing after all? Oh. So a couple of years have passed, and after getting a Game Boy Advance and my brother's PlayStation 3, I was pretty satisfied with the games I was able to play. The urge to play older titles would sometimes kick in, and when that happened, I had emulators like Classic Boy on Android or EPSXE, FCUX, SNES 9X, and my good old friend Fusion on the PC to play every single legally obtained game I had. Where did I get these legally obtained games? You might ask. Well, after leaving GameFab behind, not because it was malware, but because it didn't have a lot of games, I found the Palm Tree website. And the Palm Tree website was awesome until it was shut down and randomly came back. But it was the go-to place for legally obtained games back in the day. You see, a lot of people's childhood gaming memories consist of getting that new console you wanted for so long, or getting that new multiplayer game and playing it with your friends for hours, or seeing that popular creator playing your favorite game, while my childhood gaming memories consist of me playing these games on emulators on my Toshiba Satellite Pro all by myself, but being just as happy as the other kids, if not more since I could get all the games I wanted, use whatever emulator I felt like using and customizing it as much as I could to have a great experience that was fully customized to my taste. And you can't act like this is some stupid stuff only dumb nerds like me would want. Things like the RetroPie and the mini consoles becoming popular proves that the interest for emulation does exist and it's something a lot of people want, which takes me to... Emulation is now deemed mainstream. Great, for the most part at least. It was amazing seeing so many new people in the community, though that popularity sparked more legal concerns than before. Concerns that subsequently became takedowns of a lot of ROM sites, the Palm Tree website being the one which generated most of the controversy due to how popular it was. I wasn't super into emulation during this time, as I had begged my parents to buy me a special edition Pokemon 2DS in 2016, so I was having a more regular gaming life by playing on an official console and buying all the games, and even if it wasn't the most recent console out there, I felt like I was, at last, up to speed with the latest gaming trends, which made me feel pretty happy. And the most recent Nintendo games my laptop could run were games from the N64 era, 
So playing Ocarina of Time 3D and New Super Mario Bros. 2, even in 2017, felt surreal. I did, however, make a return to my gaming motherland, now getting my games from other websites, such as Corner, Emu, and Armania. Around this time, I also found out I could use my DualShock 3 on my computer through some special tools, which improved the experience drastically as I had been playing with the keyboard before that. And I remember being into Nintendo 64 a lot during this time. I started out by using Mupin 64 Plus, but later found out about Project 64, which did its best to run my Satellite Pro, whose hard drive was constantly failing and half of the keyboard didn't even work anymore. All until one day, 12 year old me lost in Smash 64 and proceeded to break the screen like the idiot I was. Though, by what I can only describe as luck, my parents decided to buy me a new laptop a few months later. While I didn't have a laptop, I'd just play on my phone or PSP, the latter having received a lot of love from the emulation community. After getting my new laptop, which had pretty much the same specs as my last one, only 5 years later, I just kept playing the same old stuff. I got a Wii at around the same time, which is incredibly easy to mod, so I was either playing on emulators through the Wii, or just playing actual Wii games. At this time, I'd just use emulators on Windows if I needed to record videos, and boy did I record videos. I swear one day I'll make these old videos public, and by one day I mean never, as they're all incredibly cringe and they're in Portuguese, so who cares. Anyway, there's not much more to say about this time period, so let's move on. Nowadays, I don't play that much on emulators. After getting my current laptop in 2021, I started using Steam more often and getting more into games such as TF2 and Portal, while giving my IRL game collection some more attention, as over the years I got a lot of games from friends or relatives that I never tried before. When I feel the need to play some older games, I always go with RetroWatch. It has so many options and themes and emulators built into it that just make it the best emulator package out there. Also, I recently found out about something called Retro Achievements, which RetroWatch supports, which gives a bit of a modern twist to these older titles. And when emulating handheld consoles, I just go with my recently acquired 3DS, as the button layout is pretty faithful to the Game Boy family. I'm glad emulation went from something that was pretty unknown to one of the most discussed things when it comes to the gaming world. I only lived through the latter part of that evolution, but it was still something that was amazing to go through, despite all of its ups and downs. I take some pride in saying that I grew up with emulation, because while some people only grew up playing one console, it's cool that I was, along with thousands of others, able to technically grow up with so many of them. To this day, whenever some of my friends need some help with an emulator or something like that, they always give me a call, and that makes me feel happy that I'm helping them and the community in a way by bringing in new members and telling them all about this fascinating world, something that I'm doing with this video. With all of that said, use this safely. Piracy is once again a crime. Dumping your own games for your personal use is said to be legal, though I'm no lawyer to be talking about this. There are also a lot of free and open source indie games out there that you can download and emulate with no legal problems whatsoever. So if you're afraid of any trouble, give them a go. And well, thank you for staying this long and hearing me talk about one of the things I cherish the most from my childhood. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to stick around as we're nearly at 2000 subscribers. And with all of that said, I wish you all a very nice day.